We are so fortunate to have so many vaccines. We have a long history of using vaccines to protect us from viruses and bacteria, which before there were vaccines used to kill thousands of children and teens every year in the United States. And the truth is, smallpox is the only disease that we've completely eliminated. All the other diseases are still out there. And if we did not vaccinate against them, we could easily have an outbreak. As a pediatrician, I am so happy that the children I care for and my own kids don't have to suffer that way because we have vaccines. When I talk to parents in my practice about side effects, I first like to explain how vaccines work. A vaccine teaches your body's immune system to recognize a virus or bacteria so you can build up your own immunity against that disease. Sometimes when you get a vaccine, you may get a small fever or maybe some muscle aches. This is normal and is a sign your body's immune system is working to get stronger, kind of like how you may feel sore after a workout. After the vaccine does its job, it leaves your body. So most of the side effects that we see are these minor, treatable symptoms that go away after a few days. There are also very rare reactions that can occur, but these are actually so rare that in my career, I have never seen one. With every vaccine that we recommend now for kids, the risk of the disease itself is far greater. The only exceptions to this are cases where a child has a serious chronic medical condition like cancer, or another illness that weakens the immune system or has had a severe allergic reaction to a prior vaccine. If you have questions, especially about side effects, the best source for that information is your child's pediatrician who knows your family's health history and who can talk to you about the specific vaccines that are recommended for your child. Vaccines should be available to most families for no cost or low cost. If your child has health insurance, vaccines are most likely covered because it's a requirement put in place by the Affordable Care Act. A few older or very limited insurance plans, though, still may not cover all vaccines. If that is your situation, or if your child does not have health insurance, they could receive free vaccines through Vaccines for Children. This program offers free vaccines for children who don't have insurance, who have insurance that doesn't cover vaccines, who are eligible for Medicaid insurance, or who are American Indian or Alaskan Native. Most pediatricians provide vaccines under Vaccines for Children, so talk with your pediatrician to find out more about this program. You can also call your state or local health department and ask how to access free vaccines for your child. It depends. This is a good thing to talk about with your pediatrician. If a child has mild sniffles or mild cold, they may still be able to get the vaccine. If your child has a more severe illness, it may not be the right time. Your pediatrician will be happy to talk with you about this. You can always call ahead and ask before your appointment. Teenagers and young adults can get a number of vaccine preventable illnesses, including whooping cough, mumps, HPV, and meningitis. These can be serious if your teen gets sick and they can spread easily, especially in a setting like a high school or college. So it's important for your teen to get the vaccines that are recommended for them. Vaccines work as a partner with your teen's immune system to help it learn how to recognize a virus or bacteria before they are exposed. And you want your teen to be protected as they grow into a young adult. Vaccines help keep them safe as they begin to explore what they're going to do in life. If you are a parent in the United States who has a toddler today, then you didn't get all of these vaccines when you were a baby. I'm the same way. But we were both at risk of serious diseases like Haemophilus influenza B and pneumococcal meningitis, which can lead to deafness and brain damage. These are dangerous diseases. And even though we've had a measles vaccine for decades now, measles is still a risk because it's common in other parts of the world. Most years, we have around 100 people with measles in our country, but in 2014, it shot up to more than 600 cases. Whooping cough still infects thousands of people every year. And the tough part is we can't predict which children will have a mild case and who will have severe complications, end up in the hospital, or die. As a pediatrician, I want parents to have all the tools they can to protect their children, and vaccines are an important part of that. The HPV vaccine is more effective if given sooner rather than later. This is partly because preteens produce more antibodies after HPV vaccination than older adolescents do. 
the vaccine just works better with their immune system at that age. That means if your preteen starts their vaccine between ages 9 and 12, they will get just two doses. But if your teen doesn't get their first dose until age 15, they'll need a total of three shots. Giving the vaccine earlier also means they can be protected well before they're exposed to the virus. And that's what you want, because this is a vaccine that can actually prevent cancer. If you have questions about HPV vaccine, talk with your pediatrician. No, vaccines do not cause autism. It just so happens that kids get several vaccines around the same time that some children start to show signs of autism. But that's a coincidence, not a cause. Sometimes things happen around the same time and our brain makes natural connections about the events. But that doesn't mean that one causes the other. Children get several vaccines between ages one and two, which is also the time some children start to show symptoms of autism. But science has shown that they are not related. If your child ate a cheese sandwich and then fell off her bike and broke her arm, you would not assume the sandwich caused her broken arm. It's the same situation with vaccines. Vaccines use a killed virus, a piece of the virus or bacteria, or in some cases a weakened virus to teach your body's immune system how to recognize that disease. Because the virus or bacteria in the vaccine is either dead or very, very weak, it does not cause illness in healthy people. Instead, it simply teaches your immune system how to create your own antibodies. There are certain vaccines, however, that use a live, weakened virus, which very rarely can cause illness in people who have cancer or other autoimmune diseases. They may be able to get a different form of the vaccine, or their doctor may advise them to not get that one vaccine. If you have questions about your child's vaccines, a good place to start is your pediatrician, who knows your child's health history. Here's what I hear some parents ask about delaying vaccines. Either they worry about their child getting so many shots at once out of concern that it's too much for their immune system, or sometimes they don't want their baby to get that many pokes at one time, simply because shots do hurt. Here's what I can tell you. All the vaccines were studied alongside other vaccines. Millions of children have received these vaccines together and so we know it's safe. The actual amount of active ingredients in each vaccine is tiny. Your child encounters more germs and bacteria just by crawling around the house or drinking their breast milk or eating their food every day. And we wanna get children their vaccines on schedule so they'll benefit from all the protection that vaccines give. I tell parents that the pokes hurt for a second or two and then your baby is fine. And in fact, it's actually less stressful to have several shots at once during a single experience rather than spread out over weeks or months. That just creates three or four stressful experiences for your baby rather than just one. Getting your child vaccinated on the recommended schedule is really the best way to protect them and keep them healthy.